Hey, what's happening guys? Mike Moo here. This is a follow-up video to my Samsung Notebook 9 Pro review. So many of you have asked about upgrading the SSD. Actually, a couple of people have private messaged me about it. I'm not sure if that's a lot of you guys or not, but it is definitely upgradable. The problem is, is that it's supposed to be an SSD only interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out about upgrading and see if maybe that is a typo, see what kind of gains we get if we try to install something that is NVMe, which is the fastest available right now. So this, I have a spare Samsung Pro 960, which is an M.2. This guy is super duper fast. So this is a one terabyte unit. I'm going to go ahead and show you the upgrade and see what happens. So stay tuned. And note that this might be a two-part video because uh, I'm just going to record this part first and um, show you step-by-step step all the way through and how I'm doing the upgrade. All right, let's get right to it. Okay, so I'm showing you the screen here on my, uh, my Samsung Notebook 9 Pro. And normally I'd use something like a Cronus. And the thing was is that I bought an Acronis license and they, uh, I, I don't know where I put it, honestly. So I bought an Acronis license specifically for use with this Samsung uh, Notebook 9 Pro here. And I don't know what happened to it. So I decided to try out this one free software called Macrium, uh, Macrium Reflect. There's a free version 6.0. Uh, which was released in June uh, 26th of uh, 2017. And it's got some really awesome features. Yeah, uh, like free for home use. So uh, the, the version I'm gonna be using is free because it seems to be able to do what it is that I want, which is basically um, do some uh, backup cloning. So I'm basically gonna do a whole backup uh, to a separate environment and restore back to the um, NVMe drive. So in order to do this properly, you're going to have to have an external hard drive. So what I have here is, I have here a Western Digital Passport. You're gonna need at least 256 gigabytes. I'd say just get a 5, 512 uh, gigabyte handy and ready to go. Um, because this is my first time using Macrium Reflect in a long time, I'm not sure exactly how this is gonna go, but you're gonna see it as it's happening. So, uh, you know, if, if I can go ahead and do this, then you can follow right along and do it yourself on your own um, Samsung Note or actually any computer, uh, Windows computer should be the same exact way that you do this part. So this could be helpful for you even if you are not using or if you're not going to be upgrading. All right. Um, back in the day, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm actually a consultant. I've been an IT consultant for many, 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 many years. Um, it's pretty sad how many years I've been an IT consult. So back then, we used to use a program called Ghost. Um, it was by a different company before, and then uh, Symantec bought them out, so it became Norton, Norton slash Symantec. And, uh, and yeah, that's what we used to use. We used to, it was great. Norton did a couple of changes to it and it didn't end up being um, that great, uh, you know, afterwards, but they, they left it mostly intact. Then I moved over to Acronis and Acronis is better for server environments. They have a whole, whole system um, that works out pretty well. All right, so I just downloaded the Macrium Reflect download agent and the version I'm choosing is free, of course, because I don't actually have a license key. I'm just using the free version for home use and I'm gonna download the rest of, of the stuff. It's actually gonna install, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna download in my downloads folder and I'm gonna run the installer directly uh, after downloading. So this, sh this should just take um, just a moment here. Uh, some of you might be asking, uh, Mike, why don't you just stick your SSD, your M.2 uh, SSD in an external drive and go ahead and clone it directly to that? Well, because that doesn't exist for this interface, this NVMe interface, PCI Express, sorry, PCI Express NVMe uh, interface. Um, not any way, not that I could find right now. So if you, if there's a, in the future, there are, I don't know if they're going to produce something that will allow you to interface through Thunderbolt 3.1 or 4.0, whatever might come out, that allow you to get uh, perfect access to PCI Express uh, interface externally on a, a notebook. That'd be pretty darn awesome. Uh, we've come pretty close to it. 
with uh, the external graphics cards that are available on certain high performance gaming notebooks out there. Uh, Razer comes to mind. I know there's a bunch of other videos on YouTube that also show people using uh, or hacking their way into external graphics on there. I am not a super big gamer and uh, as it is right now with the video editing software, they don't make super good use out of the most of the graphics cards. So it won't interest me until they can all take advantage of the awesome graphics capabilities uh, that we get from you know, NVIDIA, AMD, uh, uh, among, among others. All right, so this is taking a little bit longer than we expected. Looks like it's a whole 853.4 megabytes. It looks like it's gonna take up about one gigabyte or so of space on a drive. So make sure you have enough space. And if you're gonna do this cloning, it makes sense to do this much sooner in your use of your computer rather than later. Uh, I suppose with, with how fast drives are nowadays, uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But if you have a fuller drive, obviously it's gonna take up more space, you're gonna need a bigger hard drive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but if you stick to 512 gigabytes, then you should be fine. Okay, so now it is download extracting, create a component zip file. I really like that this software actually tells you what the heck is going on. I appreciate that. I remember way back in the days, when I say way back in the days, way back in the 80s or 90s, you used to see this, um, you used to see this, this uh, hourglass that uh, used to just keep turning and turning and turning. You'd never know what exactly is happening because the software doesn't tell you, uh, nor was there an interface for it. Okay, so we're gonna extract, we're gonna install this right now. Um, I'm keeping a log of it in case anything happens, but I don't think anything will happen. Yeah, Macrium has been around for a while now. I first heard about them many years ago when they were in a, um, a website called, uh, what was it Free Software Giveaway or something? It may or not, may not still be around. All right, so please read the license carefully. Uh, it's for your own personal use, domestic purposes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can read all this stuff. Um, about licensing and all that, and that we don't really own the software, we're just licensing the software, their confidentiality, they're not gonna share your stuff, information, any other amendments, governing laws, blah, blah. These are all required. I don't think there's anything really um, crazy that Macrium would stick in there, otherwise uh, the internet would all be up in storm. All right, so there's my license key, it doesn't really matter, it's for personal, non-commercial use, and yes, this is personal. This is my personal computer for personal use. Um, no, I'm not going to register at this time. And I will install for all users, even though I am the only user that is going to be using the software. All right, so it looks like it's done. Great. Now, let's go ahead and try opening it. Does it open automatically? No, it does not. We'll just go ahead and open it. It's right there to give you a nice little icon here on the desktop. Oh, geez. Okay, do not remind me. I don't need to register that. Uh, rescue Media, no. I'm not going to create that right now. It's good to know that this will actually help do that for you, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look at the... Uh, wow, there's so many partitions here. Small partitions. All needed for... Um, this all needed for all this. All right, so unformatted 128 megabytes, 100 megabytes there, NTFS. This is the primary. And then Windows recovery tools are also in here. It takes up 346 megabytes. Uh, other recovery partition, they set aside about 13 gigabytes. And yet another one, another gigabyte. So it looks like they use all this space out there. So there's two options on here. If you have a completely clear disk, you can do the cloning and you'll clone it directly to another external drive. I do not have that. Um, actually, I don't have that for this example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna image this disk. So I'm gonna image it and I'm gonna tell it where to put it, which is basically my other drive, which is my passport. And I'm just gonna stick that in my root directory and use the image ID as the file name, yes. And then I will click next and I will let it do its thing. Okay, template for the backup plan. None. I am only going to do this once. So this is great because they actually help you set up a backup plan and strategy. 
So the rule is, of course, if you don't have three copies and it doesn't exist, um, this helps you at least keep your second copy. Uh, yep, yep, run purge before backup, purge your oldest backup sites. Okay, I don't need any of that. All right, uh, maximum file size, automatic, compression, medium, blah, blah, blah. It's going to save onto my D drive. FAT32, unformatted recovery tools, and I'm going to click on advanced options, play around with some things here. Compression, we're just going to do medium. Don't need to make an exact copy of the partitions, intelligent sector copy, that's pretty cool. Automatic, okay. I'm not going to put a password on there. I will verify the image or backup. This is usually a good idea to make sure that everything went well. Um, yeah, always verify your backup. I think it's totally worth the effort. I'm not going to have the computer shut down. And this is cool. You can actually send an email uh, about the sex success. So I can actually do that. Oh, no, not in the free edition. Okay, never mind. But in the paid edition, you could do that. All right, so I'm going to click Finish. And I'm going to run this backup now. I'm not going to back up and do the schedule in there. Uh, because I'm only doing this one time for the time being. And actually, if Macrium uh, turns out to be really, really good after this test, I might actually just consider buying a new license myself and trying that out on one of my other computers, uh, at least until I find my Acronis. I'm pretty comfortable with Acronis. So here we go. The backup is starting. So uh, this is just the first part of the video. So please... Uh, join me for the second part when I actually, uh, the second part, and maybe, maybe I, I suppose if you don't need to know how to back up or clone uh, your own computer using software that's freely available, you can go ahead and join me um, only on the second part, which is where I'm going to open up this notebook and laptop and uh, replace the SSD flash drive in there with my Samsung 960 Pro and see if it works, right? I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that th that uh, the interface actually works. There's a there's a good chance it's not compatible because I mean even on their own website it says it's only the SSD three uh, SATA three sorry SATA three interface. I might have said SSD uh, earlier, but but SSD just is just a solid state drive. So a SATA three interface may not be compatible with my PCI Express uh, SSD NVMe drive. Okay, so uh, again, I'm just going to let this go ahead and finish up all the way. I don't really think that there needs to be 22 minutes or so of this, uh, of this actually running and recording. I think that's just a waste. But basically, you can see um, this should be the way it is or the way it's supposed to be working. And looks like I'm going to finish that in 23 minutes. Okay, stay tuned uh, for uh, the part two or the part I just talked about. Um, please like, share, and subscribe if you like videos like this, and uh, I hopefully I will continue to have or set aside, well, actually, the more you share and like and subscribe and the more that um, they get interaction, and actually, if you buy stuff through my Amazon.com links, et cetera, et cetera, uh, the more time I will have to go ahead and produce these videos for everyone. All right, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next video.